With its four luxury projects in India, the Trump Organization has taken the possession to become one of the most important stakeholder in the Indian real estate market. A very crucial partner in that journey has been Tribeca Developers. Today we are joined by two very special guests, uh, Donald Trump Jr. from the Trump Organization and Mr. Kalpesh Mehta from Tribeca Developers. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Uh, let me start with you, Mr. Trump. Uh, you know, you've completed four projects along with Tribeca developers in the country. What essentially has changed since then in the context of the Indian real estate sector, which essentially gives you this new zeal to put your faith in the country again? Well, so I think we got through some pretty rough times, right? You had a, a long time downturn in the luxury real estate market and, and the, really the real estate market in India. Uh, you had sort of the disaster you know, of COVID where things were delayed. And even during that time, and by the way, you also had four years where we couldn't do new deals. And so when Kalpesh and I worked together for six years prior to that, five years prior to that, daily, we were just getting into the swing of things where we could, we could have done, well, we had one deal we could have probably wrapped up before the presidency and, and still been able to fit in under the time frame. But we had a lot of deals that we could have done during that time frame. But what we really learned how to do is work together. We saw that even during the adverse times of a rough real estate market and during COVID and all of the craziness that was thrown at us uh, in the world over the last five, six years, that our projects here were still able to outperform. The, the quality of product that we were able to build was still able to command a premium, uh, sell at greater velocities. And so it, it's only solidified the model that even in arguably some of the roughest of times, uh, we were able to still do incredibly well, uh, overperform the market, uh, overperform so many other brands that tried to come in, you know, and, and change the skyline of some of the great cities of India. It, it just never took, but ours did. And I, I think that speaks uh, volumes to our brand, but it also speaks volumes to sort of the, the level of commitment and quality that Kalpesh, his team and our partners uh, in all of these jobs have been able to deliver. I just want to ask you, Kalpesh, this next set of expansion that you just spoke about today, what does it entail? how many projects under this next set of expansion, which would be the cities that you've targeted, because that's also very important. And finally, have you selected the developers who would be taking on this project from, from that point? So look, there are two parts to our expansion plans for Tribeca, right? Uh, one is the Trump portfolio, and the second is the Tribeca portfolio. Uh, for the Trump portfolio, we're looking at your standard seven metros, um, where we do residential uh, Trump offices and Trump fillers. And the non-Trump portfolio, which is the Tribeca portfolio, uh, that would be focused on Mumbai, Pune, and Delhi NCR. Uh, the non-Tribeca portfolio, we kind of do you know, on our own, along with you know, land or development, you know, developer partners. But for the Trump portfolio, we're looking at partnering with you know, the best developers uh, you know, in those micro-markets, where you know, they can take care of the land approvals and all of that. And then we can come in, Tribeca can come in and take care of everything else. Uh, you know, real estate is, is such a local business that, uh, you know, just like Don can't operate in India, you know, without somebody like us, uh, we can't operate in, you know, in another micro, in uh, different micro markets without very strong local partners who are good at managing the environment over there and, uh, and letting us do what we do best, which is, you know, product and, you know, sales and marketing. Okay. Uh, I, very fascinating, the name. Uh has been catching my attention, Don. I wanted to refer to you with that name once in the interview, but just wanted to understand in terms of developers that you'd be selecting. Could uh, Lodha has developed one project for you that's in Mumbai. Uh, could that company figure out in the list again when it comes to taking on this new set of expansion? 100%, I mean, and that's, that's the reality. Uh, because it's, at least on the residential components of these buildings, once the building is built and sold out, we sort of can go back in that market and do it again. So I think Mumbai is an incredible market, very large, I think incredible opportunities there. We wouldn't, not that we wouldn't be able to, but we wouldn't want to build two buildings across the street simultaneously with two different partners and compete against each other because it's just not the way we conduct ourselves. But the reality is because these buildings are now so far done and complete and delivered, you know, we basically have access to go to any of the markets again. Uh, you know, I, I'd love to do something with a Loda again, but it, it, it's not. It wouldn't necessarily have to be exclusive to them. If someone has, you know, something else that's in the works that fits what we would do, hmm. right? I, I could put our brand on 200 projects in India. They just may not really be Trump projects, even if we're doing that. And I think that's the mistake that many brands did. They say, well, we want to enter the market, so we'll slap our brand on something else, and we make cars somewhere else, and. They get there and then people see the end product and it's underwhelming. 
uh, you know, that's a little different for us. So we want to be very careful about that and you know, choose only, only the finest project. Uh, for our viewers, help us understand what goes in this game from your end. Is it sort of investment that also goes or is it just the name for which you get the royalty? And how do you derive, how much revenue do you derive? How is that mechanism working? Well, you know, we, we don't discuss the details of that. Every project's unique. You know, diff different projects, you know, command different premiums depending on what, what we're doing, what the opportunity is. Uh, you know, we haven't typically, uh, you know, invested alongside when we've gone into other markets just because we're so unfamiliar with those markets. Mm -hmm. To do that right, you staff up a team and construction expertise. What we would rather do is bring a team of experts that understand you know, value engineering, that understand marketing and design and, and focus on that and work with the existing teams on the ground. You know, not to say that we wouldn't, but the reality is when we've had the relationships that we've had, the successes that we've had, we're sort of leaving a model that works, leaving well enough alone. Uh, you know, if we were to do it and it's a possibility, we would do it alongside partners like this. I don't think we'd likely come into the market and say, you know what, we're going to do it on our own and compete against people who've been in the markets for 30 years and they're friends with everyone and every board that needs everything to get signed off on. It's a very locals game. Uh, you know, and even, even the Trumps don't have the hubris to, uh, to assume that, you know, you, you can do those things perfectly in another market where it would make sense. And so, uh, you know, we're very happy with the model that we have. We're incredibly happy with the partnerships that we've developed. And, uh, you know, it continues to work well for us. One question for both of you, where quickly you guys can come in. There have been a lot of regulatory changes also in the Indian real estate sector. Be it RERA, consumer protection, state, center, all of them putting in efforts to propel uh, home sales. What's most exciting for you? And then what's most exci exciting for you? Look, RERA has been the biggest game changer. Mm -hmm. uh, it's given consumers the confidence that you know, things will get delivered, that the, the money will not get siphoned. You know, it's mm. brought in uh, you know, a level of clarity and a, lot of di and, and, a, and a level of discipline into the sector. Mm. Uh, it's weeded out a lot of the guys that you know, probably could not perform. So I think in general, it's good for you know, branded, high-quality developers who wanted to do the right things anyways. Okay. Well, I think you know, from an outside perspective, that's incredibly important as well, right? Because people oftentimes, they're buying because of this. But if the developer is not acting... Uh, accordingly, we saw that you know a long time ago. Before we, you know, well, as an outsider coming in, well, how much is that really selling for, right? There's the number that's on paper, and then people will show up with a briefcase of cash, and it's a Can little I bit different. It was actually a big part of our relationship. We didn't worry about that because of the understanding that we had amongst ourselves, the trust in the relationship that we had. But it certainly would impact any other brands looking to get in, where they may be getting involved with a partner who may not uh, be, let's call it, as honest. Uh, so, from us, and for the fact that people are putting in, and you had a lot of sort of failures, right? People put down a deposit, something never gets built, money disappears, it's a problem. So even from us as an outside perspective, knowing that the consumer is going to be protected and taken care of is a big part of that. That's why we're putting our brand on a project we, we expect to deliver for those people. One question that I want to understand from you, when uh, Donald Trump became the president, of course, there was a fair bit of uh, impact that came on the firm's business. You couldn't license transactions. Uh, now that he's in the race again, uh, does that sort of worry you that the business may take a backseat and get impacted? And how do you insulate that? Well, listen, I, I think, you know, we, we can make those decisions now. And it's really only, you know, once he assumes, you know, that position of power that anything would change. So uh, we, we have, a, we have a, long, a long way ahead of us just because, you know, you're two years out from any kind of election. And again, in, a, in an ordinary relationship, that would be tight because you, you don't have the same things. You're looking at, you know, at this point between the Tribeca team, Kalpesh, myself, you know, I, we can get things done a lot faster because we've done this now so many times, right? It's just, uh, it, it's very easy. It accelerates that process. It allows us to get things, uh, you know, done much quicker. And so it's, it's less of a concern, certainly, for, for now. Hmm. So you'll take a back seat as far as if, in case Donald Trump is to become the next president? Correct. You know, and then we'll worry about that in two years. But I think we, we have a lot we can do in, in the two years uh, okay. prior. Mr. Trump, uh, you've sort of seen the global market. Uh, you've presence in multiple economies in various businesses. As far as real estate is concerned, in the list of global markets, where does India feature right now for you in terms of your expansion? Listen, I mean, right right now globally, it'd, it'd be you know number one. I mean, I, I think there's you know we, it's the largest market outside of the U.S. Mm. Uh, you know for us already. Uh, I think given, you know, sort of the demand that we're seeing, you know, the opportunities that have been presented and, you know, we may see a lot of opportunities that we say no to because it doesn't fit our brand. We got to stay true to that. Uh, but, you know, I think it continues to be and I think 
when you have someone as sort of motivated and entrepreneurial as Kyle Pesh, uh, uh, I may not have a choice. It may become number one, even including the U.S. I, I told Don that uh, we're the second largest market right now, but in, in 10 years, you know, I'm going to try and make India the largest market for uh, Trump branded properties. What's the next business that you're looking at in India? Well, you, you never know. We'll have to we'll have to figure it out. But uh, you know, I think there's an incredible opportunity. I think he's, he's giving me ideas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> get to work. Get, get to work. I mean, we all hope that this partnership uh, does some great work in other businesses as well. But anything looks interesting to you at this point of time? Yeah, you know, our, our focus has been real estate as a company. It's always been real estate or the business is around real estate. Uh, but listen, I, 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 there's no reason there couldn't be resort or hotel. Uh, for us in here, obviously, we're already having some conversations about potential commercial side. So, you know, I, I imagine it'll stay within real estate, but it doesn't have to. Okay. We'll all hope to see you in other businesses. One last question. Your father, of course, is in the race uh, to become the next president of the United States. How involved are you in that entire process? How do you help him? How do you strategize with him? Uh, and how confident are you of this happening one more time? Well, you know, I, I'm confident in the message. I'm confident in what he's able to deliver. Uh, you know, I, I think we have to get through a lot of hurdles through the way our election cycles work. And, you know, right now I think it's probably much less about a candidate than it is about a ballot harvesting operation. Uh, and I think we have to learn how to focus on that. The Republican side is always a very late adapter to that. The Democrats get much more creative, uh, you know, in how they do that, whether that, you know, weaponizing sort of COVID to change things or to do that. Because, you know, when I, when I look at the issues, when I look at the economy, when I, you know, I don't think we're losing on issues. Okay. I, I, I don't, not even a little bit. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I think we're losing in the way that we've we handled those things and, and have tried to do that and refuse to adapt. So I think we have to do that. And I, I think that's critical. And I, I think that'll be a big part of whatever we do over the next two years. OK, thank you so much, gentlemen, for speaking to us. Thank Pleasure you. talking to you. Pleasure talking to you, sir. Hope to see uh, more beautiful projects, uh, you know, coming on the skyline of the country. Thank you so much for having this conversation. Thank you. Thank you.